Good morning, sixth graders. I hope you're having a great day. Today's lesson is for Thursday, April 23rd. But before I begin, I want to say happy birthday to Josiah. Josiah, I know technically your birthday was yesterday, but today is actually Wednesday when I'm doing this lesson. And I just didn't sing happy birthday to you, so I'm going to do it now. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you yesterday. Happy birthday, dear Josiah. Happy birthday to you. So, even though you probably had a shout out already, since it's your birthday, I'm gonna give you another shout out. So I hope you had a great day, buddy. I'm sorry I didn't sing it on yesterday's lesson, but like I said, technically today is Wednesday and I'm thinking about you and I wish I could give you your candy bar but like I said I will send you something in the mail like a dollar or something and then you can get your own all right um, today's lesson is going to be over pages 298 and 299 I'm hoping by now you've read it already but if you haven't stop the video and go ahead and read it and then we'll discuss it so Pause. All right, so here we go. Um, just like we do every day, I'm going to just read the questions and then we'll talk about what you read. Okay, so here we are. Um, before I begin, this is a review question from yesterday. Um, according to the medieval Roman Catholic Church, what did a person have to do to be justified or saved to go to heaven what did they have to do they had to be baptized and to keep the sacraments the sacraments are that list that we read yesterday of uh, the things that so basically it was a work salvation you had to work your way to be saved you had to be good but remember jesus already paid the debt for our sin and um he already did the work we just need to trust him as our savior and that he is the way to heaven and that's it i'm not saying that once we trust him we have a right to live a horrible mean wicked life that's not the case because you're going to want to do right but the thing is we don't have to go to church going to church is a good thing we don't have to be baptized being baptized is a good thing, but baptism is just a sign that you belong to him. Just like your parents who are married and they wear a wedding ring. If they take the wedding ring off, you know, maybe to wash their hands or to um, work in the yard, it doesn't mean that they're not married anymore, but the ring represents that they belong to somebody else. And therefore, you know, they're off limits. But, um... But that's just what it is with baptism. Baptism shows that you are, you belong to Christ or Jesus. All right, so that's a good question right there. Now, um, who were the Germanic invaders that inhabited the Roman providences in Gaul? They were the Franks. You know, the Franks. Oops. All right, so then... Um, what was the relationship of the Franks with the Roman Catholic Church? They gained support of the Roman Catholic Church. All right. And what type of government did the Franks develop? A monarchy. A monarchy is when you have a king and a queen. There are actually two different types of monarchies. There's absolute monarchy and there's a constitutional monarchy. An absolute monarchy is when you're born into it. So say your father is the king and then he has a son. Well, then that son ends up to become king, right? And constitutional monarchy is when the people vote for who they want to be king. Um, all right, so how did the Franks finally get total control of Gaul. They drove out the Visigoths 
from Gaul, from Southern Gaul. What nation would Clovis conquest later become? France. Yes. And what arrangement did Clovis make before his death? He divided the kingdom with his four sons. Gave them each a part instead of saying, oh, the oldest gets this. I mean, if you were the fourth son, you'd probably be excited that you got part of the kingdom, which is nice. What weakened the rule of the more riving and king? The king struggled and plotted against one another. Their authority weakened until most of the governmental work was done. Um, by their palace officials. So, pass on the work. And then, how did the Carolinian Empire develop? Charles Martel. And there's a picture, I think, of Charles Martel in there. Um, yeah. And then, um, so Charles, sorry, I need to show my nose. Sorry, 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 you're not supposed to touch your your face. Um, Martel became mayor of the Frankish palace and united the Franks. He proved himself um, um, a powerful soldier and leader when he divided the Muslim traders. Um, he also, he also, with his descendants, ruled the empire. And who became king after Charles Martel died? Pepin the Short. How would you like that name? <laughs> um, that would be Miss Young the Short. Um, what relationship did Pepin the Short have with the Roman Catholic Church? Pepin made an alliance with the Roman Catholic Church, and even before Pepin became king, Pope Stephen II um, asked him to help defend Rome against the Lombards. Um, the Pope later officially approved Pepin's taking the French crown away from the Mora Mora Miro Vin Yen Kings. Oh not Kings. Just yeah, don't add that king. So look at the pictures. I want you to look at the pictures right now. You have a picture there of Clovis. He converted it says he converted to Christianity after a battle in which he believed he received help from God. And then there's a picture of Charles Martel as mayor of the palace of Austria, Zia, um, Zia, Charles Martel expanded his control over all the kingdom, and the Pope appointed Pepin the Short with oil as, prof, um, as the prophet Samuel had anointed Saul and David. Oh, there goes my big one. All right, so the next page, um, hopefully you've read that, Charlemagne, um, page, and then you have a picture there in medieval university students learned by listening to masters which is kind of like professors read the text aloud and then discuss their meaning even subjects such as logic and geometry were taught like that like this kind of how I teach you guys sometimes um, we read together and then I explain it to you a lot better when my oh my other classes my older classes a lot I will do a lot of lecturing um, but this is how the book wants us to teach it so that's what I do but I do like to explain it to you sometimes because I know what it's like when I read something and I'm like what what did I read that's me that was mostly in math and English I wasn't really great at those two subjects I actually I was better at math English mm, couldn't understand it um, so how did Charlemagne become king of the Western Roman Empire? He gained favor by the Pope from defending the invaders and Pope Leo III crowned Charlemagne as emperor. Make sure that when you read your sections that you actually read the little things like the thing on the biography there on Charlemagne too, all right? Um, why is Charlemagne considered a warrior king? He, his victories 
during his military campaigns allowed him to extend the Frankish kingdom to its greatest size. And then how, right here it would say, choose a volunteer to explain how Charlemagne governed his extended kingdom. And I would ask Christian to do that. And um, Christian would say, Charlemagne established districts, each having several manors. Each manor was controlled by a lord and farmed by peasants. So the peasants would work the land and then give the food to the Lord. Charlemagne received reports from the manors. He monitored local officials to make sure they were ruling justly. So he was actually a just king, which was nice because sometimes lords would, it was kind of like the slave system in, in during the Civil War, during the time when slaves were owned by the people in the South. And so there were some masters who were kind to their slaves. Now, they could have been kind, but it's still wrong to own a person, okay? So I want you to understand that. But they were kind to them. And then there's some that weren't kind and that beat them and um, just was very cruel. What did Charlemagne do that showed his love of learning? Well, there's actually three things, okay? He started schools for boys, for for both nobles and poor families. If you were poor, you would never get to go to school, but he allowed that. Girls still couldn't go to school then. And then he learned to make mathematical calculations. He made speeches. Sometimes he even used Lat the Latin language, which is, you know, the background of a lot of our words. Um, he reformed handwriting, making handwriting, hand making handwritten books easier to read. Remember, we talked about that yesterday. That there wasn't a printing press, and so books that we read, like I can get read a book, and it's printed. It's not handwritten. Everything was handwritten. The Bible was handwritten, and um, so there were probably not a lot of books around. So if you owned a book. You were pretty wealthy, but he uh, he made it so that other people, poor people, could have that. And then, what might be the reason Charlemagne was revered among his people? Well, we already said the one thing. He made education possible for all classes. And then, he made books easier to read. And he ensured that the people on the manors were ruled justly. So that was just kind of like a repeat of what I had said. Um, how did Charlemagne or the Colonial um, Kingdom Empire develop? Charles Martel united the Franks when he was mayor of a Frankish palace. He defeated the Muslim invaders. This is a, the question at the um, bottom of page 299. And he provided himself a powerful soldier and leader. He and his descendants came to rule the empire. So that was that section on the Franks. Now remember, the lesson plan is different. All right. In fact, I don't think I have anything in this lesson plan. So make sure that you go by the videos the date of the videos okay i miss you guys so much it was nice chatting with a lot of you yesterday um and just seeing how you're doing remember if there's any time that you just want to talk with me i know jacob did it once and um if you just want to and Alyssa, if you just want to just chat for a little bit um send me a message and i can zoom with you one-on-one -on -one. if a few of you want to get together some of you girls or some of you boys just want to then just let me know and i'll give you a time and um we can chat i hope you're doing well remember treat your pa parents nicely this is new for them they weren't they didn't sign up to homeschool and so um just if you have questions instead of hounding them send me a 
send me a, um, a text and I can help you out as much as possible. Like I said, I love you guys and I hope you have a wonderful day. And I hope you are what? Making good choices.